All right. Welcome, 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 everyone. This is Tracy Una Wagner with Personal Inspirations. And today we're going to be continuing on the preview of my upcoming course, Angels and Spirit 101, that will be out very shortly. I'm just completing getting the editing done, so it's coming soon. <laughs> but in this preview, then I want to actually talk about how we can engage with communication with spirit. A lot of people think they have to go to someone who might have the gift of speaking with spirit, and that's great for amusement, for validation, to get quick answers, to um, kind of bypass our own ego at times if we have a feeling like maybe we're hoping or thinking or wishing too much than um, thinking that we're putting our two cents in instead of letting our higher self or spirit kind of guide us. We can do that too. But truly, you have everything that you need in order to communicate with spirit. And I want to just kind of show you a few fun ways that you can do that. So let me screen share and we'll get started. Today, we're going to be talking about engaging with beings of light. So who are those beings of light? I'm sure you've heard of them before, but they are anyone that is in spirit. When you transition back to spirit, you're going to be a being of light because that's what you are, your energy. But also angels and family, friends, pets, ascended masters, the elementals, nature, and totem animals. And there are so many more. You can call on anyone that's in spirit that you'd like to communicate with, and it, I'll show you how easy it can be. But why would you want to communicate? I'm sure there are reasons why you want to communicate, some of which could be just to talk, just having a conversation, just being able to even sense that those beings are with you sometimes is very helpful. And you probably already do it now. Do you find yourself maybe talking to one of your relatives that are in spirit now? Just out loud, just talking with them. They hear you, and that is communication. Validation. That is a big one, I think. There are, we think things on our own, and we can um, communicate with those that are on the other side or those that are back in spirit easily and effortlessly. But if we ask a question and receive an answer, sometimes we feel like we've maybe wish or hope more that that is the answer and instead of really believing ourselves and getting validation is very helpful. And the two projects that are coming up, these are ways in which that we can work with spirit to validate those communications that we get that we may not entirely believe. Guidance. Guidance is big because we like to, I think sometimes, we like to have a journey or a path that we're going down and Guidance is very helpful. Maybe we're trying to decide on a different career, or maybe we're trying to decide on who knows what, a different location and living. Guidance is very helpful. And when we communicate with angels and ascended masters and our friends and family that are on the other side, they can offer that guidance. Help. Do you need help sometimes? I think we all do. Now, one of the ascended masters that's so fun to work with, if, especially if you're looking at trying to gain more wisdom or um, trying to learn more about like the sciences, is Einstein. And any of the people that are in spirit now that you think maybe you've gone through a history book or something and you're coming up on a history test, See if one of the Ascended Masters can 
be of help to you in memorizing some of the dates or memorizing some of the events. It's amazing how willing and ready a lot of them are to help just by asking to feel their presence. Have you ever been sitting on the couch or maybe you went to a, a park that you used to go to with one of your dogs that has um, gone back into spirit? Or maybe you sit on the couch and you used to have a cat that loved to lay on your lap when you would sit on the couch. These pets are still present and you can feel their presence. I can feel our animals that have passed, a lot of times just an overwhelming sense um, of their presence just comes out of nowhere. I could be in the kitchen and all of a sudden I feel them there and it's like I sense them. And so you can feel their presence just by calling on them. Maybe you just want to feel like you're not alone. Sometimes we feel like we are just in this world alone and nobody understands us. Call on one of your friends that have transitioned that knows you better than anybody. Call on a family member. Call on Jesus or Mother Mary. Those that have an understanding and a loving heart, even just having the angel's presence around you will make you feel like you are not alone and that you are loved unconditionally because you are and just their presence being with you will actually help lift your vibration and make you feel surrounded with love answers don't we all want answers to questions I, there are so many times when I pick up my phone and ask Google what is the answer to this question and if I don't have that available to me I can always count, call on angels, on friends and family, on animals, ascended masters, you name it. If one pops up into my head, and if I'm thinking of something, I'll ask them if they can help me with finding an answer. So it's very nice to have <laughs> them almost on speed dial. <laughs> because they're in spirit, they can be a million places at once. And it's okay to call on them. It really is. So how easy can it be? It's extremely easy. So I've got a couple projects that are fun to do, but that will actually help you in communicating with those in spirit. So the first is Oracle cards and the Oracle cards, you can name them anything. You can call them Oracle cards or divination cards or tarot cards or my angel and spirit cards, whatever you want to need, name them. It's just fine. All it is is a tool to help just kind of bypass what we are thinking and allow the cards to let you know what your spirit team, those beings of light, are trying to get across to you. <laughs> and candle work. This is a wonderful meditative process that we can go through that is a little bit easier of a meditation because you're really not closing your eyes necessarily. You're actually just kind of observing the candle flame. All right. So for the first project, it will be the oracle cards. The cards I'll just say that <laughs> and what you'll need are the card templates so down below this video there are links to download if you'd want if you'd like car the templates and so there are black and white templates and then there are colored templates as well there's um, two or three of them that have different sayings on them different words Let's see you can see there it says success, wish, believe, and elementals. So there's a couple other ones that are available, and I just kind of put those together just as a quick way to um, get like a direct answer. I've also included a just a plain template, and this plain template you can just print out and you can uh, fill it in with your drawings or just words or um, colors or you can actually just cut 
images out and then paste them on them. And there you go. Also, you'll need the printer. Um, using the printer just to print out whatever template that you want or templates that you want. Also, if you um, don't have a printer, you can just look at the image and you can just kind of create your own. So you don't even need a printer if you don't have one. <laughs> also, if you want to color the images or just color your own drawings, then colored pens, pencils, crayons, anything that will actually help you to create that card that is just perfect for you. Sorry about that. So once you create your, or you just print out the image, the template, then what you'll need to do is cut them out. But first, um, so you'll need scissors. But first you'll need glue or a glue stick, thick paper or cardboard, which is where the scissors come in. And then if you want, you can laminate them. I don't laminate mine, but if you have just the thicker piece of paper, just a thicker piece of paper, then you can get laminating sheets and laminate them and it makes them a little bit easier to handle and to separate. So the steps are download the card template that you want or templates that you want to use. Print out the template or templates. Make sure that when you go to print it out, make sure it's landscape. If you do portrait, it's going to stick them this way and then you're not gonna be able, they're gonna get cut off. So if you do it in landscape before you print it out, then it'll come out the right way. <laughs> Also, color it however you want if you're using black and white. Otherwise, you can use the color that is already on the colored templates, or you can just wait instead of, um, instead of using the templates, you can just create your own with colored pencils. The colors are, like if you choose a word like happiness, Think about choosing the colors that make you happy. That way, even just by looking at the colors on that card, it's gonna be personalized to how you're feeling. And maybe when that card comes up, even looking at a color will invoke something else, uh, maybe a different, um, a different idea or a symbol to you that just kind of pops into your head. And that's because it is specific to you and how you view that color. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to take that glue stick and then just put it on the back of the template and then stick it on the cardboard or thicker piece of paper. That's all you need to do with the glue and then just let it sit for about five minutes. Then you can cut out the cards. That's what the scissors are for. If you're using cardboard, it is, you're gonna need some really heavy duty scissors, let me tell you, because they were pretty hard to cut. I use cardboard, <laughs> but it was okay. Um, so go ahead and cut out those cards. Doesn't matter what kind or how you choose to um, cut them out, but just cut them out. Then if you want to laminate them, you can. You don't have to, but um, if you're using thicker piece of paper instead of a cardboard piece, then um, you may want to laminate them because it'll be easier to pull them apart from each other. Now, what I want you to do is after you've cut them out, just kind of set them off to the side, upside down so that you just see the backs, so you're not really worried about them. And just take a deep breath and close your eyes. And just take another deep breath with your eyes closed and just kind of allow yourself to just kind of be a little bit more grounded into your space so that you can feel yourself become present. You can also at this point, if you want to, send down a line or link, something that connects you to Mother Earth and a same line or link going up into the ether or the um, the cosmos and just allow that to just kind of gr just be in that space as well and you can just get all of the cosmic energy and all of the earth energy and you can just allow it to fill your being
When you do this, you're grounded completely because you're physical and spiritual. You have grounded both in the physical and in the spiritual ether energetic spirit plane. So it's going to be easier for you to receive those messages. Now, with your eyes closed and being completely grounded, ask your spirit team to help you choose a card when you're ready. At this time, you can open your eyes and just knowing that your spirit team is there willing and ready to help you pick a card that you need to know about today, or maybe you're looking for an answer, that's fine too. Just kind of go through the cards with them upside down and just kind of mix them up a little bit. It doesn't have to be, you know, any real big deal. Just mix them up a little bit. You can either set them all out on the table or you can um, just hold them in your hand and then And then after you mix them up, pick your card. So my card is Elementals. And I actually have been feeling the Elementals a little more now because it's just, I've been outside a lot and it's beautiful spring-like weather out. <laughs> and I always think of the fairies just kind of going along, just preparing the flowers for spring, getting ready for their blooms and getting them all started. So that is actually what came up was the card elementals. I'd love to hear what you got too. <laughs> so if you'd like, just feel free to let me know down below if you've completed this project or if you've just used your own Oracle cards or made your own, what cards have you chosen? What cards came up? Who are you hearing from in spirit? What light beings have shown themselves to you? And then after you're done, thank your spirit team because they are there always for your help. And when we thank them, we're showing gratitude. And so they'll come around even more. <laughs> All right. So for the next one, we need a white tea candle, matches, a coaster, and some essential oils if you want. So you can get a coaster, you can get whatever you want, something that is fireproof so that when you light the candle, it's, it's safe. All right. So the steps for this one is placing your candle in or on a fireproof container. Just be extremely careful what you're doing with the candle. It's fire, so just extra caution. <laughs> carefully light the candle. So we're gonna carefully light this candle. All right. And then you'll wanna let it burn for a few minutes. What we're trying to do is create a little puddle that is around where that wick is. And that little puddle especially if you're using essential oils, then we want that little puddle to be a little bit um, deep enough so that you can add a couple of essential oils on there. And let me just say, as the candle's burning so that it's creating that little puddle, when you choose an essential oil, choose essential oils that raise your vibration. And what does that mean? That just means choose essential oils that make you smile, that make you happy, that make you feel loved or like your mood has been elevated. Those are the essential oils that you want to use because when we're communicating with spirit, their vibration and their energy now. And so that is at a high level. They're back in beings of, they're back being beings of light. So with that, we want to raise our vibrations so that we're able to receive those messages easily and effortlessly. So you can see the little jiggle maybe of the wax that's on there. So now we'll go ahead and blow out the, can the candle carefully. So just make sure that you're careful with blowing that out, especially since the wax is there. That's why I like the little tea candles because they're easier to blow out too. All right. And then just go ahead and grab your essential oils. 
whatever one you want. And in that little puddle, just add a couple drops. All right. You don't have to add essential oils at all if you don't want to. And if you don't want to add essential oils, you can always just grab a scented candle, one that makes you happy and raises your vibration, or you can just go with no scent. If you want to just meditate on that flame without any distractions of smells or anything like that, that's fine too. This is not a have to thing. <laughs> you can do the candle however you want. It's all good. But then just letting that sit and letting it solidify again so that it is, um, it kind of mingles itself and allows it to solidify again. Probably not going to be able to get it completely, but it's already, you can see that it's already starting to set up a lot better. Now, after you're, while you're letting it solidify, if you want to just sit and we'll do the same thing again, just closing your eyes and taking some deep breaths and seeing yourself grounded and maybe a cord liner link going directly down into the earth and another cord liner link going directly up into the cosmos, then we're completely and totally grounded from the physical being to the spiritual or the spirit being. So that, that connection is both with our physical self and our subtle body, which is the spirit self, our soul self. We're just making sure that we're connected in both areas because we're both. We're just love may manifest. <laughs> All right. And then again, ask, then again, ask your spirit team to be with you and to give you messages. And this one is just a little bit um, different because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be in more of a meditative state. So those ideas and symbols are gonna be coming into our crown chakra and our third eye, and maybe even our heart, something that we may just be feeling. Um, we may hear something, we may see something in the flame, we may just have it in our head to where we just know it. And that is what we're really using the candle for. We're just using it to be able to um, block out the other distractions that are around us and really focus. It's almost like using a mirror for scrying. It's just a little different because we're using a candle flame for putting us into that meditative state so that we can receive the messages. Then open your eyes. And then we'll carefully light the candle again, because by this point, it's solidified. Carefully, carefully. And there's the flame that we'll be just kind of putting in an area to where we can just kind of look into the flame and just allow that flame, just watch it dance and shimmer. And then while we do that, you can just allow the messages to come to you. And it's that easy. Now, if you've used the essential oils, the smell will actually help to raise your vibrations if those are the kinds of scents that you've put in there. Allowing the scents to kind of just wash over you and allow the smell to just fill up the room that you're in. And that actually helps you to helps to be able to keep you in that meditative or that state of acceptance of hearing the, the guidance from the beings of light. Listen, just keep listening. And then once you're done, you can just take that and carefully blow that candle out again. Remember that wax is um, probably still warm, so you don't want to get it all over. So just be extremely careful. Once we've done that, we've gotten some, oh, that smells good. 
<laughs> once we've done that and we've gotten the messages that we've wanted or maybe maybe we want to try a different technique that's great too but for this go ahead and still thank your spirit team because they were there for us and they continually are and they've they've taken their time to deliver messages to you or images or symbols. And it's just a great way to show our gratitude and thankfulness that we do have ways in which we can still communicate with spirit. All right. Wonderful. I hope you had fun working with the Oracle cards and with the candle work. I'd love your opinion on them and I just would love to hear what your experiences are. If you've had any, I would love to hear it. So you take care. Thank you again for spending some time with me. I always appreciate it. As always, I'm sending you and yours love, light, and eternal blessings. Take care.